when you're born again, your your whole taste of life turns into a heavenly thing. And so, sister, uh, sisters, thank you for blessing us with that amen. in that praise and worship. Yes. Amen. That's what this church has been about. Amen. We're not indifferent. We're not cold. Amen. I didn't know that. No one ever taught me. I used to come to church and be like, I don't like that style. I don't like that style. And it was all about me, right, until I got saved. <laughs> when I got saved, I was like, wow, man, Lord, I'm missing out on so much because the kingdom of God when you hear about revelation, it is so powerful, amen. You see that every tribe, every tongue, every nation, yes. and that is what we see here this morning. So we want to welcome everyone. Thank you, Bishop, for being here, amen. I'm just sitting over there, just kind of missed the eye, just, just thinking and saying, God, you got him up and out and moving, and he's preaching, amen. And he is the standard, amen. Can I tell you that? I know people might say, well, he a man just like me. No, he's the standard. If you see him doing, we saw it with Sister Peggy through the years, the enduring faith and the battles, the personal battles that she doesn't have to allow that battle to hold her down. That's the point that you look at Christians. Yes, we can, all oh, this, I know that, I know this. No, I'm talking about, look at how well they are holding it down. Are you holding it down in 2000? 23 are you holding it down in 2024 that is the enduring faith that represents your that, that tells the truth so when the world the flesh and the devil tells you you look at you and you're like i'm still standing i'm still praising i'm still coming yes my body may be beaten and torn i'm here to glorify our god amen and i'm telling you music prepares the heart that's why i share with each and every one of you how do i do it what must i do amen my, my wife knows amen I, I have my own personal uh, battles amen in between my work my job is highly stressful amen and at the same time how do i maintain how do i hold it down how do i it's it, staying in the word it's praising the Lord. We woke up this morning laying that foundation. She got up before us. We had Jeremiah over. And therefore, the routine, amen, not religion. We got to be careful we don't teach our kids religion where we, we're, we're cardinal and they don't see us repenting. They don't see us praying. We need to be that example. So I just tell you, each and every one of us, as we come to church, if you want to be prepared, if you want to be engaged, Make sure you have praise in your heart. Play something that back. Even if you're not singing, your mind is picking it up. Amen. And you'll find yourself like I was this morning going in the closet, picking my clothes out. And a song, a spiritual song just came in my mind. And I started singing it. Amen. It is faith. The just shall live by faith, saints. It's not an easy thing. I, I would love to tell you that we can just lay hands on you and that's it. And voila, you're, you're finished. No, it is each and every day. Day. Hallelujah. And that's the way we serve and worship him. Amen. For our households. What I want to share with you this morning, I'm getting, having an opportunity. I thought a uh, pastor was going to be ready to go. Um, but I'm all, I'm in season and out of season. Amen. Um, it's important that we hear the word. The word of God sanctifies. It's one of the working effects of the word of God is sanctification. It's the, the making us right, making us righteous, making us think righteous. Amen. You used to think one way. Now you think another way. Right. That, that's the evidence. Our faith. This is why I love our faith. Our faith is a evidentiary faith. Amen. Don't let the atheist who says, I can't see it. I can't weigh it. I can't taste it. So therefore it's not real. No evidence. What is the evidence? The byproducts of your life. Are you exhibiting the fruits of the spirit or the fruits of the or, or the, the works of the flesh? Amen. So that's what we want to know, and that's what we're going to dive into. In this time, Bishop was talking about the challenge. The challenge is he and I heard this, you were saying that there are ministers that are like, we're just gonna play some reruns. And I'm like, reruns? Reruns on the day that the Lord is, is you know, and again, we it's, we let's let's preface this, we, we, we don't have to know the exact time, chronological time, because there are debates on that. We don't major in the minor stuff. We major in the main, the fact that he was born. It could have been in the, it could have been in the, in the uh, fall time. It could have been whatever. The point, you're missing the point. The point is he was he came here as Emmanuel, right. God with yeah. us. We sung that this right. morning, and, and if you missed some of that, the theme that the praise and worship team under the direction of uh, Minister Max, uh, Max was just masterful on what their selection by the Holy Spirit, amen. It's not just kind of willy-nilly picking a song, amen. Every song gave us foundation of why we are here. What is this about? What is the church about? Why did he come, amen? That question is so, so important that you need to understand it, not just for yourself, not to win Bible trivia, but to but to win the hearts and the minds of individuals. I want to pause real quick before I even get into the message. wanted to just uh, do a shout out. For um, Sister Rose will be leaving, amen, before we even get into the message. She will be leaving on Friday the 29th and will return January the 24th. And you will be going where? Haiti. 
she is going to Hades. So I tell you, we are going to make sure that we're in prayer. That is priority because she's going into people would say the belly of the beast. Amen. The, 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 not just, if the government don't get you, amen, the false religion will. Amen. And she is a minister of God set forth with a reason and purpose. Amen. With a heart and a desire. Amen. To see um, and to, to feed folks and to take care of those babies. And also, as she's also going, and I, and I know this, she's going also for the pay respects for her mother who passed. And, and I tell you, sister, we definitely appreciate all that you have done in the name of the Lord. You're going in his grace and his favor. Amen. And the saints, saints, we all have a job and responsibility to pray for one another. That is one of the missions of the church. One of the passions that I've been um, really been burdened with is like, how do we get the church to be the church that Christ has created? Amen. Bishop has some wonderful things coming up in 2024. Amen. That he's going to speak about. I'm going to make sure I give him the opportunity so that way you can put it on your calendar especially um, for New Year's. We're doing something a little special for New Year's this year. So he'll he'll give you um, put up on that. So keep her in prayer. Um, also, we uh, brother and sister Aziz, you guys had some um, some gifts. Uh, some we're gonna do a little fun thing today. Some stockings. Amen. And so uh, brother and sister, uh, you probably don't know this, but you gave a suggestion. I would like to make this a uh, trivia at the end of the message. So you guys pick the question. Y'all okay. Okay. Uh -huh. listen to the message and they will do a question and they're gonna do a giveaway. Amen. So um, we want we believe in engaged believers, amen. It is I shared with you before, amen, that the battle is on. Make no mistake about it. The moment you come into church, the moment you decide to come to church, all hell will break loose. And you have to understand that there's a three-part enemy, amen? The world, the flesh, and the devil. You're, you're probably at 90% of your uh, uh, battle is going to be with the flesh because I don't want that. I don't like that. I don't want to, I don't really, you know, the flesh, the flesh is indifferent, amen? But we know that life as a spiritual born-again believer, amen, we do the unthinkable, amen? We love the unlovable, amen? It is the opposite of what the world, we were born in a world in a system that told us, hey, you do what you want, whatever feels good, but you don't like her, leave her, divorce her. If you don't like him, divorce him. Time to move on. I don't like this church. Let's move on. That is the consumer society that we live in. Amen. And God has changed changed us in a, with a new way. Our new way is loving. Our new way is enduring. Our new way, and we use wisdom. Amen. It's not just, we don't just go around and do foolish things, but we use that wisdom. And I'm saying that to say, as the message is going forth, amen, what I have learned and studied through the years by sitting right over there and even in the congregation is that I must be engaged with the message that's coming forth from the man of God. Amen. We understand that it is not, again, um, by Bible rule that where you just find the Bible verse and then all of a sudden that's the message that we're going to preach on. No. The pastor is hearing from the from God, amen, hears from God, they read the word of God, and then they share it to the congregation. Why? Because he knows their flock. He knows his flock. He knows what we need. If it's, I've been, I told you all this story about love. I, I, I Bishop, preach, every time I preach on love, I'd be like, why are you preaching on that? I'm good. <laughs> it's amazing that we grade our own self. We grade our estimation, amen. That fallen nature still likes to creep up every now and then, and we tend to overestimate our own spirituality. But get, thank God for the pastor. The pastor's job is to say, hey, I see quali great qualities, but we still got some more growing up to do. Amen. We saw with Paul, with Timothy, amen, that exhorting, amen, and that's that's our life. That's why we come to church. So I say that to say that as the message is coming forth today about Christmas, about Christ revealed, Christ to come, amen, that's what we're talking about. That is Christmas. When we look up, think about the baby in the manger, I'm going to give you some points that I talked about on Thursday. Um, if you uh, weren't able to catch that, please try to catch Catch, uh, catch that, amen. But I'm going to try to be succinct in my delivery, amen, because there is some information here. But I want you, it's really about what the Word of God is going to do. Because I, I'm a firm believer that every one of us, we have a, a very special time during this Christmas season, is to mention Christ and why and how the why and the how comes. Oftentimes, there is a there's a vacuum with biblical understanding that has been the burden that I've heard Bishop through the years of, of saying, hey, our people, the people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, amen? It, what they don't know, what you don't know can't harm you. Amen. I, I didn't know about the church. I didn't know about my role in the church until the man of God, faith come by hearing and hearing what? Hearing the word of God. The man of God brought it forth. And I was like, oh. And Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Those who are called by me, they respond. If you don't respond, 
I, I guess the, the opposite of that is true. Amen. You always see this in the Bible. You see a for and against. You see condition. You see the good, the bad, the ugly. When you read a, a very difficult story in the Bible, it's not just to make you go, man, that's crazy. When we think about Jesus and why he came, the divine nature, God himself saying, I will come and I will be with them so that I can pay for their descendant. Amen. He would be a cruel and mean God if there was no, if people say, well, what must we do? He wants us to be 100% righteous. I didn't know that. I didn't know that his righteous standard is 100% perfection in the way you think, in the way that you act, and in the way that you uh, speak, the things that you speak. God is going to judge. I didn't know that. I didn't know that because there was a time I was like, I'm good. I really don't need the Lord right now because it's going to cramp my style. Amen. Until I realized that my problem was a sin problem. The problem, the reason why you think that the baby that came, the virgin birth, all of that, that was divinely foretold was for you and I. And it was motivated by love. When you think, I'm not saying that just to be deep, but I'm telling you that when they talk about our God, when they mock our God, we can say our God is full of mercy and grace. The mere fact that you're still here, the mere fact that he just open up the earth and swallow you, amen. We are under grace, amen. Each and every one of us, the mere fact that you are able to come here this morning to worship him, to honor him, you are under that grace, that amazing grace. What is grace? It is unearned. Unmerited favor. You didn't pay for it. You didn't do nothing. Hold on, Lord. Let me clean the floor up real quick. Hey, let me preach. Let me preach. I'm going to get up and preach and do the best preaching, Lord. That's going to count for something, right? It doesn't. He says, I gift it to you. And each and every one of us are recipients of that. So we're going to go in and we're going to talk about that. The problems that we see in the church. The, the church has always had it. This is nothing new. It's always reverted from God. Look at the children of Israel. And you will always see men of God, women of God who got up and said, hey, this is the direction. I think this is the direction we're supposed to be going. Right? You always saw it. You saw it in the Great Reformation, amen, with John Calvin and all those folks that you hear about these older guys. And we're kind of like, oh, man, what's, what's the big deal? Because they clarified some things that the Catholic Church was doing at that time. And they said, uh-uh, uh-uh, the just shall live by faith, not by your works, amen. not by your sacraments, not by your, your, your relics. Not by, um, you, you know, I pay and I do this and I do this. And it was all that going on. And all they said is they looked at the word of God in its plain spoken word and said, hey, we're deviating. And that's why I love the word of God. The word of God is the ultimate tiebreaker. <laughs> if you get believers coming in and they're debating, going back and forth, there's a couple, one or two things. Look, two people can't be right. Or it could be a situation that, hey, you're not walking in love. Hey, you're not doing this. Hey, you're not doing that. The word of God is the answer. Amen. Can we can we recognize that? Amen. In our church, in our families. Amen. How about my family's all over the place? Are you applying the word of God? Well, brother, this at church. It's at home. Come on. Man. It's, my home is a sanctuary. That's why you feel spiritual right now. You feel spiritual because you're saturated. Have we saturated ourselves? That's why people say, why do you listen to secular music? Because I, I got to be saturated. I, I, I have an a, a old nature. I still have this old coat on me. And until I die, it's still going to be on me. And I don't want to stir that up. Amen. You're born again. You're, you're, it's, it, positionally, you're right. But he says sanctification. And oftentimes what we see in the gap and our understanding is the gap of sanctification. That's why you come to church. That's why you hear the word faith come by here. And I keep saying that because the Bible gives us the foundation. Jesus told Satan, Satan said, hey, your physical needs are more, have a better priority than your spiritual needs. And he goes, he said, no, no, they don't. He says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth Amen. of God. If I'm not hearing the word of God, saying, I'm going to be spiritually anemic. I'm going to be weak in the faith. I'm going to slip and go, man, I'm still trying, I'm struggling. And I tell you, each and every one of us, the power of deliverance, I've shared it. I've heard Bishop's testimony, my own personal testimony. Amen. We don't go and talk about all our exploits. But the point about it is, that's how I know God is alive. He's alive because I have a new nature. I have a new way of thinking. I have a new way of praising him. Amen. Enduring faith that gets me up, that goes to church and says, you are important within the ministry, not because of you. But because of Christ that died in you. And other people are relying on you. Amen. And so that, that's a different motivation. Because now your motivation. Check this out. Your motivation. And I, always, I, I have to. Deacon and um, uh, both our deacons. 
I always say this because they live down the street. They come in and do different things. And I always use him because I'm always seeing him digging out of the back there. But I always say it because I'm like, there's the, I, I've seen him limping. I've seen him tired. I've seen him dealing with his own personal thing. And he's doing things to prepare the way. And that is his service. That is his reasonable service. Amen. He knows that it, he's not looking for man for reward because if you look for man for your reward, that is your reward. Amen. He is looking to Christ. He's going, Lord. Look, how can I not serve you? Come on, yeah. How can I not serve you? And look at what all we look at what we sung about, amen. We we people bore and yawn God, and I'm you're listening to the fact that the preeminent one, the, the all powerful one, died and became a baby. The ultimate humiliation. We're going to talk about that. Let's go into first verse. Amen. Sister was talking about it. Um, I want you to, if you've got a pen and paper, just write down these points. Because I do it because this is the way I think. Um, I have to think a lot in, in order because my mind sometimes, I'm like, ooh, I'm popcorn, right? I'm, I'm asking my wife, I'm like, ooh, look, squirrel, right? <laughs> I'm always, um, I'm always like over here and then she's like, well, hey, you got to stay on task. I'm like, yeah, we can do this, I can do it. I'm all over the place. So the Holy Spirit inside of us sometimes needs that. Uh, uh, we need to, because the Holy Spirit is going to just be giving you word and word. And you're going to, this scripture, and that's going to cross, <laughs> reference that scripture. So you, so I'm doing this for you on this Christmas day, and I promise I got a, 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 a watch person in the back. Um, and I share that right with everyone because people say, well, brother, let the spirit flow. And I'm like, but I, I am concerned about your time. Your time is precious. You came here. You many of you started at eight o'clock in the morning, and guess what? I want to be. I want to lay down. And also, here's the other part. I know the word of God is powerful, sharper than than two uh, two edged sword. It can accomplish what it's going to accomplish. Amen. I can. You can read one Bible verse and go, Amen. Let it be so. You know, and we move on from here. So, um, and just if that wasn't enough, we got the the. Be listening out. Just find some points. They're going to be um, picking the questions. Two questions because we got to give away on that. And obviously, uh, we can, have, can we have fun in the house of God? We sure can have fun in the house of God we, with, without diminishing who God is. Amen. So we're just saying that we want to give. Amen. That's been the spirit that I've been hearing. It's just giving of song and dance. Amen. So we're going to do that. And then we also got cake and, and some ice cream just for you go. Dick and this Adam's in the back. She was telling me, hey, tell them. And, and guess what? We're not going to hold you up. We know that everybody, I, we, we're just so excited that you said, Jesus. I will be, I want to be your gift. Amen. I want to be your gift and I want to push past my flesh. I want to push past that traditionalism. Amen. Because trust me, people are like, well, I mean, we got prepared for Christmas and we got kids and we got family. And we, we at Focus of the Will, we're saying, no, God, you are our priority. Amen. And so I owe it to you to be mindful about that and still at the same time be obedient to God. So the first verse, I mean, the first thing that I want you to, I'm, I'm going to give you these points so you can keep me. We talked about this on Thursday. I'm going to run through them again. We talked about the uh, revealing of Christ. Christ, the divine revealing of Christ. It, it, this wasn't just a, a cosmic accident. We don't believe in coincidence and we don't believe in um, um, conspiracies, amen, because the world will tell you. You'll watch some Discovery Channel thing and say, oh, it's one big conspiracy. They all made this up and I, now we've got the Bible. That's not how we got the Bible, amen. So the revealing of Christ, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about God's love manifest, amen. Why? What was the motivation? What is your motivation here? What is my motivation here uh, to minister, to serve one another? It's love, amen. He demonstrated it, and it wasn't just so that you can observe it like a television show. Oh, Jesus loved us, but I ain't doing it. No, we, he's like, look at what I'm doing. Follow my ways, amen, and you'll be all right. Then he says, um, we're going to look at the, we're going to look at the Old Testament um, the prophecy, the divine nature of scripture. Scripture foretold these things. This is, again, this is to give you the boldness when you look at your grandchildren and they go, Santa Claus real and Jesus is real, that muddy mixture that Bishop has talked about, that there's no wonder our kids believe in power rangers or power forces and all these different things. And we as parents need to get it right, saints. Sometimes it's because we don't know how to communicate the gospel. Jesus is in your heart. You need to explain that. Right? Jesus died on the cross. I don't see him. Think about it. Your children don't know these things. we got to step our game up spiritually in 2024. Hallelujah. we got to know the word. We can't play around and, and play last and, uh, fast and lose. We have to know it because there are those that are counting on it. Hey, um, I would believe in the gospel, but I've heard. Do we have a rebuttal for that? 
what the Jesus said so so there, right? That's our we, we that's not gonna cut it. And a sophisticated, your enemy, the devil, is roaming around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And he's devouring folks, and we are the deliverer. God, I told y'all this a long time ago, Bishop Priesthood, that God will send you a deliverer. First, it's your pastor, amen? And then the pastor's job is to perfect the saints for the what? Work of ministry. For the work of ministry. Until you turn it, until basically, and I'm going to paraphrase it, until you turn into the maturity of Christ. You're not tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. You're not, when well, they said this and he said this, you know the true, sure word, the tiebreaker. I'm telling you, anybody can tell me anything. I'm always going to refer back to the tape measure, right? You can say that's about 5'2", you know, like with me. If you take me, I'm 5'6", when in reality, I'm about 5'4", because uh, I, I overestimate myself, right? I can, I tend to go, man, I'm about four people. How tall are you? 5'7", um, right, really? Right, that's, that's in the church. And people are because well, I feel it. That's what I feel, right? And until you get over that hospital and then the lady put this thing on your head, you're like, oh, man. And I got my boots on too, so so you know. So anyway, my point is, my point is, we got to stop doing the word of God. When I through the years, I saw a serious tone from Bishop through the word of God, not not just loosey goosey. He go back and if, and he if he saw error, amen. There was a lot of ministers that we follow. Not like I said, I don't take anything away, but we're all. Can I tell you, everybody's held held accountable to the word of God, amen. You don't get away with it, you. You say some, sometimes you misspeak, sometimes you don't really fully understand the implication of what you're talking about, amen, and you've got to get into the Word, because people, if you've been saved for 20 years, you think that you, you probably mastered the Bible. I've heard people say, brother, I've read through the Bible two times in the year, and I'm like, unless you are walking like Christ, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know that, amen, because you're going to see it in humility, that's number one. So, still going on, Old Testament reveals. We're going to talk about that. Just real quick. I'm just going to give you Bible verses, and we're going to get to the main text. The humility of Christ is birth. We talked about that. Why is that so significant? Why is that powerful? That's not just, oh, okay. Yeah, he was humble. No, 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 no. The creator of the universe, the one that created the vastness of space, the one that can move through time, he's ageless, timeless. He is outside of time. This is why we know that the God of the Bible is not the God that the atheist has conjured up in their mind as a caricature who says that your God ain't this, your God is the spaghetti monster, as some of the uh, leading atheist debaters that are out there saying that. And I'm saying that because these are, these are folks in your kids' colleges. They're in your kids' school, and you are not bringing your A game when it's time to teach them. So they go to these schools, and guess what? Satan's evangelist is speaking to them. Making them go, yeah, did God really say that? That's what God said. Yeah. That's happening over and over. Look at Satan's uh, plan with Eve within a matter of seconds. And we, we don't know, but within a short time period in a conversation, he got her from doubting God going, yeah, you can be God, right? <clears throat> this is the planet that we live on. Everyone is somebody, and everybody is, I'm my own God. I do what I want. Can't tell me not to do that. Can't tell me not to drink. Can't tell me not to smoke. Can't tell me who to hang out with. That's the world we live in. And then you come into Christ, you come, you get born again, and you're confronted with a God that says that I am the Lord, your Savior. Amen. When we look at these two things up here, the line from the tribe of Judah, he's coming back as that. He's coming back. This is the Lordship. Many people love the cute, away in the manger, baby. That is, that is popular. They will show it. You, you won't see the reigning king. You ain't going to see the revelation, Jesus. <laughs> and that one is going to, they're going to be like, okay, see, that now we want to part ways. But they love the harm so they believe when they didn't understand that he was the sacrifice. That, that, that He was hidden. Amen. And the last point we're going to talk about, the future revelation of Jesus. That's Christmas. This is what Christmas is about. He came. Amen. There's, the story is not com incomplete. It's not a partial story. It's not a partial story. So we go from that. We go to the resurrection from Easter. God has given us holidays. And, and Christians debate that. I'm like, hey, hey, guess what? They don't know that. Preach the gospel. You get the opportunity to, to, to you know, not debating the egg or and the rabbit. You get the opportunity to talk about, oh, resurrection Sunday. Whether they like it or not. Whether they like it or not, because why? Because your motivation is love. If you don't love a person that doesn't love their child, will not discipline their child. Come on, I love my child. I don't want you going to jail. I don't want you dying. I don't want you going to hell. 
And how I do it is just as important. Because remember humility, that word humility. So first things first, let's go to verse uh, Isaiah uh, 9, 6. Amen. And I'm just going to run through this. This is talking about Christ revealed. Amen. So we didn't just happen upon this story. They talked about this story called Esterus, um, a Greek mythology. And they said Christianity was copying off of that. This is one of, one of the million things that they try to come against Christianity. And you'll probably see that on the internet. You'll find it and go, oh, Christianity just taking, taking a cue off of that. Total different story. Total different con concept. They were talking about a, a virgin uh, birth of this this uh, God, this deity. And they said, yeah, the Christians heard that and they just copied it. No, the Bible foretold this long before, and it says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be Wonderful Counselor. We broke this down on uh, Thursday. Each one of those things are very wonderful counselor. That means it's in him is all wisdom. All wisdom, knowing everything. You you gotta you're missing something in life, and how do me and my, my uh, me and my husband, how me and my children, how do I interact with them? How do I interact with folks on my? Go to the Word of God, because in the Word of God is the counsel of God, the wisdom of God, and Jesus is full of that. All knowledge, mighty God, <laughs> Amen. We understand that talks about His His omnipotence. That means he's all powerful, amen. Look at space, amen. They keep scratching their heads. And I share everybody, I say, I watch some of these shows because, I, you know, science, I, I love science, and I, but science to testify to the fact that, look at the creator. Man, look, it looks like a, a person, an all-knowing being created all of this, right? The universe, the weak and strong magnetic, magnetic force, which I didn't know that the magnetic force that we have around our planet prevents us from being radiated, um, with, hit with radiation from the sun. It just came in. We just, it just, that's, just, you know, coincidence, right? <laughs> it's more, it takes more faith to be an atheist than a Christian. We understand that the, the of divine God who has a biosphere that produces its own water. You produce your own water. You produce your own oxygen. Yeah, well, we can look at this and we can look at this and we're looking at the DNA. And the, the DNA, amen, that part of, this is part of my job field. And I told people as I go to these conferences and I'm around these Secular, you know, it is so amazing the DNA, it's information. We can code this, we can know who this person is, we can look at the, we can splice the genome, we can do all these different things. But guess what? Guess what? They understand that it's information. Information hints to the fact that there's an intelligent mind that put it there. Amen. But they live in the, I call it the AGB, anything but God syndrome. Amen. Now they're talking about um, uh, multiverses and all that stuff because anything but God. That is the sinful nature of man. Amen. You and I have both been there so we can express to them that bro, I, I got you. I, used to, I, I was with you. Mm -hmm. I didn't want there to be a God. Right? That's how I explain it. When they, when they are pushing back and I go, I, I know what you're feeling. I know what you're, because in the center, man wants to be God. We want to be enthroned. That's why the devil tempted Eve with that same tactic. And she fell for it. And millions of people are falling for it. And we have the key. Each and every one of us have insight to the sinner's mind. You know how they think. You know how they eat. You know their motives behind everything. Hey, cuz, let's go to the club so we can witness to women. No. That, that's, that's, that's not going to happen. Right? You, you can do it. Right? But it, it, it's foolishness. So... Moving, moving on from there. So we talked about that. He said he's the mighty God, everlasting father, talking about the fact that from the beginning of time, talking about his timeless, hidden inside of that. When you look at these scriptures, hidden inside of these scriptures are, are a preaching message in and of themselves. Amen. He's the prince of peace. What is the prince of peace? He brings pr peace to the humanity with their God. The person that you are at war with, the person who you need to fear is God. And you're going to see that in Revelation. You're going to see that's the one that you need. You're worrying about this king, that king, and this person my president, this person not my president. You need to fear the one who created them all. And we see that. We see his power. That is in, um, again, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Amen. We, that was talking about Christ revealed. Now we go to Christ manifest. Amen. Manifest. What does that mean? So he was talked about and then he came about. Amen. John 316. We read this and we love it. Amen. And it's bumper stickers. But the significance, the power that's hidden inside. Amen. It's enough to make you stop sinning. It's enough to make you say, I, how can I not be obedient to you? Look at what you have done. Look at your wondrous works, amen. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, 
that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. You see in there, tucked in there, is that God gave his son willingly. Amen. Jesus said, I, I must do this. I must go to the cross. I have to do this. No, come on, Lord, let's go. Right? Religion runs in and says, no, let's not do that. Let's not do the hard stuff. Stay in that church. Stay with that spouse. Let's not do the hard stuff. Come on. Let's do the easy stuff. Let's run. Right? That's what he's saying. That's why we're going to make a rebellion. We're going to come because they wanted a Christ that was going to come on the scene and he was going to take over Rome. And he said, that's not what I'm here for. Motivation. His motivation was he believed that he should, that, that believed that, which is important. Believe. Believe means follow. And when you think of the, see, believe in the Bible, it means follow. Yeah, I believe in Jesus. Even the demons believe in Jesus. But they had demon faith. We need faith faith that says, oh, okay, surrender, surrender. Come to church on, a, on, on the 24th, because you know, 25th, so you got your gifts, right? You said, Lord, you are first in my life. Lord, I'm weak. I'm a weakened vessel. You strengthened me. You came, you came to earth to demonstrate your love. How can I not worship you? How can I not spend an hour, an hour and a half not worshiping you? Two hours. How can I not do that? Because when we finish, saints, we're going to go about our day, right? But you have said, God, you are my priority. That is the power of God. I see it in each and side. Every people say, power of God, but don't they got to do something? No, the power of God. In fact, that they walking into a church on 24 when churches are doing, like you told me, videos. I didn't know that. He said, oh, no, they're going, hey, watch the live stream. We're good. Now, I, I understand it. Don't get me wrong. If you can't, you can't. We're not legalistic here. But, come on. Oh, you're cramping their style. And, oh, they may not show up. Come on. How, how about we say, God, to you be the glory. Amen. No more in lip service, God. I'm tired, I'm tired of singing praise and worship song. I got a playlist of praise and worship song, and I don't follow you. Right? I want to follow you. I want, and God does it incrementally. Amen. Grace Amen. to grace. Amen. He knows where you are spiritually. He knows that you're moving, but a step one step at a time. He knows it's like that. This it, this has been your life, step at a time. Amen. And you're moving, and you're there's progress. You're not stagnant. You're not sitting still. Amen. So that's what He showed us, manifested of His love. I can stay on that by itself because that by itself, He why did He come? He came, he just, and I will add this caveat in there. It's for love, but also for his glory. Amen. So that he can look, Amen. he can look at everyone and say, a, a holy, you, when people say, he ain't a good guy. Well, how come my cousin went to hell? And how come these people are going to hell? He's not a good guy. They say that against God without knowing the fact. But brother, sister, but do you know what he did? That should be our res response. Well, if God is love, yes, but love has to be received. I can sit there and say, hey, I got a $1,000 uh, check for you to pay your bill. If you never receive it, you never got it. They're doing these little scammy um, videos now on YouTube going, um, yeah, come and claim your check. And I'll see it. I'm like, man. even I looked at it and was like, man, is that real? You know, they said, oh, there's a, another check, 6500 or whatever. But and then we, there's a little more to it because we're getting calls about that at the BD. But my point is, people literally go, for real? My, my ears perked up. Even I was like, okay. They said, oh, the government's giving out another, uh, you know, this and that. So, um, and, but there's a caveat to it. There's always a, something at the end of the, the, the tunnel, right? Give, give me your soul, and I'll give you $6,500. Amen. So, um, anyway, we, we're moving on from there. We're on the Old Testament being revealed. We see it in the book of Micah. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephraim, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah. I'm talking about Bethlehem. Talking about, oh, little insignificant Bethlehem. Why is that insignificant? Because remember, he came in humility. He came, re un he came re uh, hidden. He wasn't revealed. His glory, we always go, that's why people are unimpressed. That's why people may be beyond this part of the season and not understanding that he, had, he was hidden, had to be hidden from, uh, from Herod. Herod put out a kill watch. For two, I mean, a, a massacre that took place that Joseph heard through a dream, heard to get out of there, told the told the um, the kingmakers, told those guys, told the magi, said, "Hey, don't go back and tell him. Let me know where he's at so I can go and worship him." 
Herod wanted to kill him. And then in his fit of rage and, and, and anger and malice, amen, because who is this king that's going to be born? Who's going to overthrow me? This is the God that we serve. What he went through. Going to Egypt about 75, I, I was researching this because I, 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 like, I'm studying and going like, hey, so Egypt is about 75 miles away from where they were, so they had to walk. So it's hours, and he got probably went in the dark of night, and that kill order, it came out. And so this murdering spirits of babies, it's nothing new. They did it in the Old Testament. The spirit that just, just destroy babies, amen. We and and the cry you don't you think that any one of those babies' death went unnoticed? You think that the reigning king, yes, he came as a lamb, but he will come as the one that will judge the world in unrighteousness. Amen. Told him to move. This has been this was foretold, prophecy again, showing the divine nature. Why should we be impressed? Why should we go, Lord, thank you? Why should we tell our kids, hey, real quick, before we open up the gifts, let's I'm gonna tip, share a little story. Matter of fact, we're gonna find a little video, cute little videos, really consent, send it to loved ones. Hey, this year, do it in a gracious way. Not in a really, I'm not saying being like, hey, look, heathens, uh, y'all need to watch this. And no, we, we are loving. We Our motives are loving. I don't want you destroyed. Can you share? I'm going to share this. I'm going to share this with you. A little cute video. It's a cute video. I mean, it, it tells the story why he came. What is this all about? We only I, I look and I see no other faith, no other religion has what Christianity. And I said, God, you so orchestrated everything. Even in a Christ-hating world, he is making his name known to the world. Do you see that? Do you see the fact that they can put X on everything? But guess what? It is Christ is being foretold. He's being told. Um, and this, this was prophesied. So this talks about the divine nature. So. Um, Micah, again, talking about uh, Bethlehem. Bethlehem was, at that time, it was an insignificant town. It's like, hey, Ke Kempner. Uh, Jesus being born in Kempner, right? Not in New York. Not in, that, 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 you know, a big metropolitan, right? In an in a obscure town. Talking about his humility, pointing to his humility, pointing to the fact that this was foretold. God said, I said, said it in advance, amen, for the people to receive, amen. And we stand back and we are amazed because we're seeing that with 100% accuracy, the Bible's on point. The Bible's on point. It says this, test it. There's no wonder the Bible says test it. Test, right? Test the spirits, right? So, humility. The next one, we're going to go into Christ and humility. We talked about this. Luke chapter 27. I mean, Luke chapter 2, verse 7. And he gave birth to, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him in the end. That talks about, you're talking about humility. You're talking about the fact that when he came as the lamb, the symbology of a lamb born in a, in a manger, in a makeshift environment, amen? He, he demonstrated that I didn't just come to be puffed up, to be served, amen? And, 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 and that is another picture. So that is very important. I want to move on so I can have enough time. But that is just talking about the fact that swallowing clothes, Again, his glory was not revealed. When he the first time he came, came, he was wearing swallowing clothes. The next time he comes back, he's gonna be in a blazing glory. Amen. Compare and contrast. I came and and this I was I was hidden. I was not revealed. And when I come back, every everybody's gonna see him. Amen. Every eyes are gonna go, oh wow. Compare and contrast to our God, the humility. He came to, as a servant, broken, amen. He came, amen. How, how then can you and I not forgive one another? I mean, just, just don't count it. I'm okay, I forgive him, but I still got to. No, no, we got to forgive, amen. I, we were talking about that this week, my, myself and my wife, amen. She knows, yeah, I, you know, when, when stress, how many know when stress happens, amen, sometimes you might say things that you shouldn't. Amen. Yeah. When you stressed out, that's just like, 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 hey, I'm upset about this. And all of a sudden, and, and, you know, your, your spouse is the, the recipient. They're around, right? Yes. And what we need to do is think about Christ. Think about the fact that he came. He could have destroyed everybody. He could have said, uh-uh, not going, not doing that. They're disrespectful. And he was innocent. A crooked trial. He was innocent. They murdered him. Not just killed him. They murdered him. They conspired against him. Mm -hmm. That's why I got to eat at church. 
you, you don't have an excuse. You're, you're not a biblical one. You can do whatever you want, but it's not a biblical reason. Amen. So my point is, we the things that we don't do, he was humble, you are humble. Amen. This is why I like, I'm telling you, as I'm studying this, I'm going like, wow, Lord, this has to penetrate my heart. I can't just deliver a message and give it to you. That is too much of that going on where I'm giving you the word, but I ain't taking it. Amen. God is not into hypocrisy. He is looking for saints that are standing firm. Amen. I'm telling you, I've seen it through the years. Amen. The, the testimony of this ministry, the testimony of our, our bishop. Amen. Through the years. Amen. Steadfast. Um, in, regardless of what battle you're going through. Loss of, of a dear loved one. Amen. And desiring to come here to be with you. Amen. And I'm like, whoa, what is that? The power of God. Don't tell me about the power of God. I've seen the power of God. I seen the power of God moving when he can say, I'm, my, my, my hip is hurting. I'm going to stay. I'm going to sit this one out. Amen. Even, even when we're like, hey, stay, stay home, you know. But I, I can see, I, I'm like, no, no, I, I see it. He said, I'll wobble, uh, I'll <laughs> limp, crawl, whatever I need to do to get with the, the saints. Amen. Why? Because we're all connected saints. Your strength, and I hope this morning your strength is here. So now we're going to go into what I wanted to share with you, <laughs> as I did my intro. Uh, I want to share with you what we're going to what we're going to talk about, just real quick. We talked about the Christ revealed, all those different points, and then we're going into Revelation chapter one. Amen. Talking about the Christ revealed when Christ comes back on scene. So how is the Christmas story tied into this? Because the first time he came humbled, the first time he came as the Lamb, the first time he came um, his where nobody knew him the first time he had to he was just he was ridiculed he was hated at birth Herod come on to the point of murder yeah people go well you know because I'm going through it y'all don't understand what I'm going through and I'm like what well, yeah brother but that's Jesus you ever heard of that mm -hmm. if you're born again if you're born again filled with the spirit of God right whoa that, that is the You are supposed to walk in that way. Walk in a manner worthy of your calling is what we are told. Amen. And it's with grace. Thank God for God's grace. Grace doesn't give us an excuse to sin. Like Paul said, he hinted to. But he gives you that. He gives you mercy. His mercies are new every morning. He, why, we're not destroyed. The planet is not destroyed every morning when God's like, okay, that's it. No, mercy. So you can extend mercy. Amen. So, Revelation, the Revelation uh, chapter 1, verse 1, the revelation of Jesus, amen, so who's this talking about? Jesus, which God gave him to show to his bondservant, who, the, John, the revelator, on the island of Patmos, um, the things which must soon take place, and he sent and communicated it by his angel to the, his bondservant, John, who testified to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that, that uh, even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one, and this is a this is a blessing. We know this. And I know the book of Revelation can kind of be, you know, people, oh, it's hard to understand. It's it let scripture interpret scripture. Read it. Under the power of the Holy Spirit, read it. You will understand that you are, he's given us insight. Saints, what's going on around us in the world, no Christian, and it happens, no Christian should be shocked that sin is rising. Mm -hmm. Wickedness is rearing its ugly head. It's coming, it's been out of the closet, now it's trying to make, put stuff you in the closet. It's trying to take you out of the public sphere. Hey, Christians, we're going to pass a new law where you can't do anything outside the, these four corners. We'll let y'all go in there and have your church. And many churches have conformed to it. But the true church of Christ is hearing this. Seven churches, seven um, spirits, ministering, telling them. And this is one of the things I will share with y'all. I've been kind of studying about that with the various churches. It's meant to identify. You, the question, when I read the word of God, is like, Lord, why are you sharing this with us? Each and every time. Just like Pastor Goosby, I'm up here preaching to you. Why is he sharing this? Why is he sharing this message with us? There's a reason behind it. Because we need to show the glory of our God that he yeah. came at one point and he is soon to return. And saints, there is an urgency of saying, my brothers, my sisters, my children, I want you all to know this, amen, by, by God's grace, amen. Because remember, you can't, you can't in any clever manner get somebody saved. It's by the Spirit of God. 
It's by your prayers, your guided and directed prayers. Well, yeah, but I've been praying, you know, for the past couple of years. Keep, keep praying. Amen. Pray without ceasing. Amen. That's what we're, we're told you. It's a fight. It's a battle. Amen. And I'm here to tell you it's a battle. Amen. I have to be reminded. It's a battle. Whoa, man, my flesh got out of control. What's going on? It's a battle. It's not easy. Christians go, oh, see, it ain't. Christianity's not working with me, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get away. Don't believe me? Look around churches all around America. We're not saying that as all, oh, come on, y'all just come on. Hey, we tell the bad news so we can share the good news. Right? The good news is Jesus came to deliver <clears throat> John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Amen. Grace to you, which is very powerful. Very powerful. He's, again, what I would share with you if I had to do a prayer or a greeting, I would say grace to you. Because I know that it's by his ability, his power, his spirit. Amen. You can't do nothing apart from God. It is by him. Grace to you. And peace. Why? Because there's anxiety going on. There is worrying going on. Amen. Peace from him who, who is and who was and who is to come from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful. And I'm going to break this down real quick. So write these points down. He's faithful. He's the firstborn. He's the ruler of kings on earth. He loves us. He died and redeemed us. Amen. Packed in this scripture. And the reason why this is powerful, packed in just in that area is the gospel. Why he came the question of why comes up a lot in saints. We need to give an adequate reason. Why do y'all go to church? Oh, because it's just another religious activity to do. We're the people that just clap and sing these songs to an invisible God. We need to explain why he came. Why am I coming to church? Or not, you know, I've heard Bishop say this and he said it in, in a way like, hey, don't waste your time. You, you can be on a boat fishing. Why come and not allow the Christ that was born in a manger, that was revealed to us, not allow him to penetrate our hearts. Amen. Amen. He's penetrating my heart right now. I'm reading his word and I've read it already and I'm reading it again and I'm going, wow, Lord, how can I not be obedient to you and do those things that you want us to do? So I just hit it up there. He's, um, so he, he's the priest. Um, he's, um, he prays to God. The Father. This is very important because when people talk about Jesus never talked about the Trinity, we, we know that he left the Comforter, amen, the Holy Spirit. We know that he prayed to the Father. Him and the Father, are, they think alike. They they are in unity, amen, hinting to the fact that the Trinitarian doctrine is, is weaving in there. It doesn't say Trinity, but it's in there. You see this relationship. And guess what he's telling us? He's saying that that's the unity that needs to be in my church. We don't do nothing independent of each other. We don't overemphasize just the spirit. We don't just over. I mean, because we see this in, in different, I would say, different sects of Christianity where there's an overemphasizing of one. We worship them all. Amen. God the Father, God the Son. Why? Because each one had a role, a supernatural role in our life. Amen. And when we see them as this full picture, we're not just divided on one. This is why there's confusion and division in the church. There is a unified faith. We see it in the seven ones when it goes with one in the spirit, one in the word, one, and it goes down the line demonstrating and telling you, how are we one? How do you get people from different walks of life, different races, different genders, different age groups? How do you get them together to sing the same song to the same God? How do you do that? That is the work of the Holy Spirit. That is the unity, the power of unity. We all have our different, in the world, there's factions, your people, my people, these people. In the kingdom of God, I point to revelation. Amen. That is the prize. That is the standard. And every pastor throughout all generations should be striving for that. How do we bring about that? Is we, 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 we bring heaven here on earth because heaven came to earth. Amen. So. I'm going I'm to read this, each point that I was saying, I'm um, in verse 4, <clears throat> we talk about this, singing to, uh, uh, speaking to the seven churches who are before his throne and from Christ, the faithful witness. Faithful witness means that he, again, hints back at the fact that his witness, he's truth. He's truth. When we see Christ, Christ is an embodiment of truth. 
He is all knowing. Amen. We know that that's his omniscience. Amen. He's pointing to Christ. He's giving you a picture, a, a, a illustration that look at the God that you serve. Do you know the God that you serve? Do you know how powerful he is? Do you know that he has everything in control, even though this planet, the kings on this planet, the bankers in this on this planet, the rich rulers on this planet thinking that they're doing something? And God's like, God is like, this is all part of my plan. His providence, his sovereignty. You see these words, the words that we hear about, those words matter. Those words matter. It is his power being demonstrated in, the, in his church. And this is why there's an urgent message for us as God's children to get it right. Amen. To get it right. You're doing it here this morning on the 24th of Christmas. And I'm, I'm amazed by that because, like I said, I know what Bishop is talking about. There are churches like, hey, we'll, we'll pick it back up on next Sunday. Good, good luck. Amen. And you said, Lord, you, you are important. You are my affection. You are the, the, the aim of my heart. Amen. Saints, there was a time in my life when my focus was on pleasing man. Can I hear amen? I, I don't know about you. If we were to be honest, amen. you don't have to raise your hand on it, but I please man. Yes. How, how high do you want me to jump? How fast do you want me to run? What do you want me to do? Smoke that? Drink that? And then we get saved in this resistance. This end. And God is wanting us to turn that affection, that same affection. He said, your rebellion in the world. Remember how you were rebellious? Rebel against the world for God and be radical. Like my brother and sister here, what they do in ministry. Um, how y'all are reaching out, going out, and, and taking that kingdom dominion, saying we there needs to be a godly representation everywhere, in places that the churches go, wait, hold on. <laughs> and I go, no, 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 you're not going. He's sending the sent ones. Amen. He's sending the sent ones to proclaim his name, amen. I see that as evident because I'm like, God, you have a plan of diversity. Every tribe, every tongue, every nation. So he is the faithful witness. He's the first one. I learned a new word, prodicus. <laughs> I was sharing that with Michael, my son-in-law. I was like, ooh, I get to say that word, prodicus. Um, it means first, it means preeminent one. It means first one. It doesn't say firstborn, people like, oh, firstborn of all man. No, first, he is the, the, the he's the, 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 the highest. He will be the, the, the ultimate, the supreme. This is the God that we worship. Yes, he came in the form of a, and this is, this is why you kept hearing that song, um, fall on your knees, oh yeah. That fall, every time I hear fall on your knees, it's like he's, every time, every every person is going to do that. Amen. It's, 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 and it's through humility. I don't bow down to no one. I One of my resistance, if I'm to be truthful, because I was like, I, I'm not, no, I don't have to do all that. I don't got to humiliate myself. This is why I can sing. This is why I can shout. When it's time, to, there's, there's applications and times when we do it. But my point is that I, I used to not be radical. I, and, and, and I'm talking about radical in my nature and, and the way I think and the way I live to the glory of God, which reserves, makes you not sin, have a decreasing amount of sin. We, we all sin. Don't get me wrong. We, we fall. We have a cage. But... The righteous, the just, the righteous person will get up every time. That is, that is the key. That's how I know you're saved. Yeah. What are you gonna do? When I messed up and I blew it and I messed, I hear people. Do, I'm like, okay, like Jesus didn't know that. He was there when you committed the sin. <laughs> That's why I don't go to church anymore. Cause I, you just don't know. I've heard people tell me stories. I'll be like, really? And each and every one of us should be that same way. That's where grace comes. Here we go. I, I, without going, I will say this, I'm on your exploits. Uh, we're not glorifying what we did. But my point is, there is the witness of the saints that is powerful. Your testimony is powerful. Your fact that God delivered you from drinking or drugs or whatever sin or vice, each and every one, the enemy has a strategic plan for you. Just like, like I said, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Be wise. Understand that that's what he's doing. We're going to continue moving on. And he said, so he is the ruler of the kings of this earth. So we said that he's all powerful. We said that he's the ruler of the kings of this earth. That is the God that you serve. That is the God that is coming back. Saints, you need that revelation. Thank you, Bree. You need that revelation on who God is. That's who he is. He is the one that will come back and he will reign and rule on this planet. Amen. And saints, it will be a bloody mess. With one word, he will 
destroy thousands, millions. The blood, the blood. I mean, I, I don't want to go into it because I always say that because it, there's a, I want you to read it in context, but you need to understand that when your God comes back, we, we have nothing to fear. Amen. But there's a sense of urgency. How many people got somebody that you want to see saved? Amen. Someone that you yes. want to know the yes. Lord. Someone that you're like, man, he's on my heart. She's on my heart. Amen. We tend to be indifferent like that revelation ain't about to happen. Or death. Whatever comes first. People might say, well, brother, we may not even be here. You're right. But death is the same thing. It's appointed once for man to die. I'm not giving you a funeral service. But just to give you the context. Because when we understand that, when we understand the serious nature of why he came. And we're not sharing the gospel this year. Bishop talked about the fact that we're going to be fellowshipping. He wants to make those connections because it's very important. I need to know you. You need to know me. We need to be texting each other. We need to be the, the, the first connection. I have a dear brother, Brother Jason, that many of you guys know. He texts me a, a lot. But, I, you know, one day I, and I told him this. I was kind of like, I said, oh, man. And then God's like, you are his connection. You are his connection. It's not good for a Christian to be alone. Just like it's not good, you know, if, in marriage, if you, if you can't hold hold back your passions, you need to get married. Amen. But what I was saying is that if there's a connection and relationship. Each and every one of us. Yeah, I, I see when I see you, when I see Deacon Adams, I see Deaconess Adams, when I see the Isaacs, when I see them, it's like it strengthens me. It's supernatural. I'm not saying that I oh I'm strengthened. It's just a connection. I'm just like, yes. When I see my brothers and sisters, my, my brother in the back, I, I, my, every, every, each and every one of you, sister, hey man, I, every single one of you, it, it strengthens. It's supernatural connection. Why? Because you're in the right place. Amen. 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 As I get ready to close, amen, I, which I promise you on that because I believe that God's word will not uh, return to him void. Amen. I believe that this foundation, what I want you to walk away with is understanding your, when you understand your God, what he came for, the baby in the manger and why he came. Because now you're going to add context to the why. Because if not, it's going to be like, okay, that don't make sense. Which I've had people say that. That's nice. Okay. For what? For the sins of the world. We have to be able to communicate that. I was there. I, and, and inwardly minister from your life. I always tell you, you have a weapon on your side, and that is your testimony. Mm -hmm. A powerful testimony that talks about how you were once blind and now you see. I was one, boy, I was, I, was a, I was a child of wrath, amen. I don't have to use biblical terms and use uh, uh, Christian needs because I need to be able to effectively communicate. I need to be able to say, no, I, you know, I was, I'm, I'm with you, brother. I was there too, where I was kind of like, where's God? All this talk about God. I, I have a lot of good people that I work with and they're good by their own righteous standard. Yeah. And they think that that's gonna save them. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, I'm like, no, until I realize that God's standard of moral perfection is 100. Yeah. He's the true 100. Mm -hmm. People say, I'm, I'm 100, I'm gonna keep the 100. They say that, yeah. he's the true 100. 100% one sin. One sin. And he gave us the gift of eternal life. Remember that? Remember I went, Very took you through those scriptures, not just to give you Bible data and, and trivia so you can hopefully win <laughs> these stockings, amen, but to give you context so that you can share because guess what? The enemy's not playing. The enemy's out to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants your grandchildren. He wants your children. He wants your spouse. He wants your, your nieces and your nephews and your cousins. He wants them all, and we need to be on guard. And we need to ask God, because sometimes we don't know what to say. Lord, I don't know what to say, and I want to be unseemly. That's pray the Spirit. That's why you get to pray the Spirit. Guess what? You pray, pray, drive it over to their house. And say, Lord, just give me an opportunity. Hey, y'all, can I say something real quick? Right? Can we do that? Can we prompt? Can we say, I'm going to leave a, and guess what? That don't mean to do a, a Pastor Goodby or Pastor Dave uh, uh, the, theological breakdown. It's simple. It's like, hey, I just want to thank the Lord. I told y'all, they asked me during the, the, the police, uh, we have a, a Christmas party, and they done slipped up and said, Pastor, they said, uh, they said uh, Goodby, can you uh, lead us in prayer? And I, you know, and I was like, yes, you know. And, and I did it gracefully. I did it to where they can understand. I started off by thanking, right? Can, can we thank them? Can we say, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for this time. And use that time to say, Lord, you gave us the gift of your son. Lord, you protect us. You keep us safe. You allow us to come home. This is how I weave into 
what I needed to do, just using wisdom. Each and every one of you guys had that ability. Tell them about where you came from. Tell them that you was once blind, and all I know is that he came and prayed for me, and you know, like the man uh, uh, that Jesus healed, and the Pharisees was trying to trip him up, say, tell us something bad about him. He said, I don't know what's going on, but all I know is I was once blind, now I see. Right. Transform life, yeah. amen. Have you been transformed? <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you, God, for the gift of eternal life. Yes. It, was, it came in the form of a baby. Lord, we have children here, Lord, and we can imagine that, that all of heaven was looking out and saying, that is him. That's him. That's the one that we serve and worship. That's why the angels were even confound. They were like, look at him. The angels were on guard to say, Lord, just say the word. Say the word and we'll destroy them. And God, you said I must go. I have to go. This is why I was created. I am the, the, the ransom to pay for your sin. You can't pay it. You can't. One sin is enough to put you in hell. And God, each and every one of us should say, well, who can, who can do that? None of us. We need a savior. We need you, Lord. You are the perfect gift. You, your motivation was right. You loved us, God. You loved us. You didn't do it, Lord, in a mean spirit. You didn't do it in a frustrating spirit. You did it, Lord, because it was love that drew you to that tree, that drew you to that cross, that wooden uh, 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 point of humility. And God, you came, you were beaten, you were scourged. And we, we know the story, Lord, and sometimes we become cold and callous to the story of the gospel when it should stir up inside of us excitement and joy and the fact that everything is going to be okay. And God, we know that you will be the returning king. That's who we are waiting for your return. We are waiting, Lord, for your soon and glorified return. You were hidden at first, God, and then your glory will be revealed. All of the world will see you, Lord. All of every humanity, the Bible says, that will bow their knee, Lord. Either, Lord, as your children, as your people, Lord, or as those who will confess that you are king. That is a statement of fact. And God, we thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that we don't have to be children of wrath. We were once children of your wrath, but you loved us. And Lord, we responded to your spirit. Lord, your grace came to us. And Lord, we said, here I am, use me. And God, I pray in this year that, Lord, we don't have to wait for New Year's to make resolu resolutions. We can do it now in our heart through repentance. Each and every one of us right now, Lord, we are repenting, Lord, only you, to you, because you're the God that sees all, you know all, there's no secrets hidden from you, Lord. There's no man, woman, or child that can, that can pretend everything is all right, God, you know it. And right now, it is with that loving, tender God that we confess. We confess our sins to you, God, right now, supernaturally, inside, we don't have to say it out loud. God, you know, take take that heart, Lord, and make that heart soft again, Lord. Not harden to the things of the word of God. I've been going to church for years, and this is just another day, Lord. No, we don't want that attitude. We want a refreshing, God. You are showing and demonstrating that to us right here, right now. And we love you for it, Lord. It, Lord, right now, if we don't have that love for you, that natural, affectionate, spiritual love, supernatural love, Lord, place it in our heart. We ask you for it. We ask you, Lord, for spiritual maturity, spiritual wisdom. We pray, Lord, for your grace, Lord, when we cannot control our behavior, you will control our behavior through the power of your spirit, through the cleansing of your word. We will read your word. Our, your word have we hidden in our heart so that we will not sin against you and, and thus displeasing you, God. We aim to please you and no one else, Lord. We love one another, Lord, but our, our ultimate goal is to please the one who delivered us and saved us. And we just thank you in your holy name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. If you just give us a couple amen. minutes, I promise, amen. Um, brother and sister, would y'all like to give the question? So the way we're going to do this is that, obviously, if everybody pops their hands up, uh, we're, we're going to make a selection, amen, a graceful selection. And if you get the question right, then we'll do it that way, brother. Yeah, uh, I just want to give a quick uh, quick testimony before uh, we go into this. Uh, my wife and I, we were at CC's up uh, in uh, Temple, and uh, we are just eating and everything. And how do you know that God can interrupt what you, uh, you're eating and stuff? And, and God can say, go do something, and you have to do it, you have to obey. And so that's what happened. My wife, uh, she looked at me, she said, uh, she said, babe, she said, I got a word 
for this uh, couple over there, because uh, it was a couple over there. They, they had a kid, they had about 20 kids, and they were eating, and it was one of the uh, girls' birthday party. And so, uh, so my wife went over there, wow. uh, gave them a word. First, she, she, she kept saying, well, you know, should I go get the word? I said, babe, if God told you to do it, you gotta go do it. <laughs> you know, you have to open it. So she went and did it. And so uh, she sat back down and everything, and uh, as uh, we were eating, we got up and we were about to leave. And next thing you know, the, uh, the mother of the daughter just started fainting and going to the ground. Her body became limp. And we believe, we believe that her, really, that her spirit left her body or whatever because she, she was, she actually died. Like, she, she was very limp. Uh, she, you know, couldn't get up or anything like that. Out of no, no breathing or anything. Wow. And so we went over there and we just started declaring the word of God over her and just praying over her. And, uh, and so they, uh, so people came around, you know, they said, should we take her to the emergency room and blah, 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 because the hospital, you know, was right across the street off 31st Street in Temple. And, uh, and so uh, the husband said, no, 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 I'm going to rush her to the hospital. And so they uh, put her in, a, uh, in the van and took her to the hospital and everything. And when she, when she got there, we still, my wife and I, we, we just met this couple too. And so uh, we got there, uh, pr still praying over them. And next thing you know, she started coming back to life and everything. And uh, the yep. power of God. And she started talking, and they were asking her questions. And uh, she, I mean, she knew where she was at. She knew her name, and all of that. It was as if nothing ever happened to her. Yes. So we just thank God. So I'm just saying that to say that you have to obey God when God says go or do something, and you have to be, as a uh, pastor say, you have to be ready in season and out of season. Amen. Amen. Uh, we have a little goodie bag. Uh, we have two goodie bags. Two goodie bags. There's games in here, candy, wow. and some some novelty type type yeah. of stuff inside of here. So uh, the first, I hope you was paying attention. <laughs> How many took notes and, and were paying attention? So uh, in Isaiah nine six, he was talking about Christ revealed, and give me one of the names. It said his name shall be called. <laughs> okay. I'll, oh wait, uh, y'all picking? Y'all pastor, y'all picking? I'm gonna let. Yeah, let, let's. No, no pastor, pick. we should pick. I see. Oh, I saw no. some kids' hands yeah. back there. Oh, okay. okay, hold on. Yeah. I'm, I, can, yeah. I, can, okay. I gotta try the baby. Yep. Yes. yes. Whoa! Okay. Woo! Okay, we have one more left. There's a lot of good stuff in there, too. Uh, the next one, Pastor said, he's the blank of the kings of the earth. No. It began with an R. Yes, yes. Come on. Woo! twin. Good job. Josiah. Josiah. Jeremiah. 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 Get up here. Oh, he's right here. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. Jeremiah. All right. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. He's the blank of the kings of the earth. Good job. Wow. All right. Okay. You got that point. Wow. And I, I just wanted to um, also. Um, this morning as the as I was coming into the church, the Lord said, he said, uh, we are a living testimony of what heaven has announced. Yes, I love it. We are a living testimony of what heaven has announced. So even today, as pastor proclaimed the word of his sovereignty and his work, God wants us to announce that, to release that in the land, right? To release that in the cities, to release right, that right. in whatever sphere of influence that you have. Uh, we say that we had got a call from a young lady in San Francisco that is running for mayor. And uh, this is her second time running for mayor. And her name is Mary. Um, she ran for mayor last year in San Francisco 
but she came in second place, and so she's running again. Okay. And so I ask you all to keep her up in prayer because the warfare in San Francisco with the LGBT uh, community is strong. Is strong. Yes. 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 There have been thousands of Christians that have been um, fired yes, out of the political yes, ring. Yes, and this is, we were just on a phone with her a couple days ago where a bunch of uh, uh, leaders from around the United States were praying. And so I want you please to keep this woman of God up in prayer um, as she goes forth, um, hoping that uh, the door will open for her to actually be mayor Amen. in San Francisco. But we know that the uh, San Francisco area, it is a stronghold for LGP, a portal for, uh, they're doing all types of stuff there. So please keep her up in prayer. Um, Wednesday, she goes to court um, battling um, some things that uh, the Christians out there are pro protesting yes, uh, yes. up in San Francisco. So please keep them up in prayer. And remember, again, we are a living testimony of what heaven has announced. Yes. Yes. Thank you all for that. Bishop, if you can close us out. With any insight and word, and we got cake and ice cream, please join us for that real quick before you head out. You know, it's been a while since I was able to walk without the walker, so I'm doing better this morning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I do want to say this for next Sunday. Amen. We will be having service here, our regular service, but for New Year's Eve, amen, we're kind of getting outside the box, and what I've done is opened up my home, yes. and uh, what we're going to do, amen, we're going to have some food fellowship, we're going to have some things for the young people, and uh, just a gathering together out there, and uh, this is kind of different because I believe that too many times what happens is, and God knows my heart, coming here and celebrating the New Year, but I want 2024 to be a year that we are gathering and not scattering. It's a time of bringing the family back together, amen. And so uh, we're going to have a place set aside if the young people with supervision want to do some fireworks. We're out in the country. The burn ban is off. We're going to do that, amen. And uh, so uh, we're going to have we're going to have a really a great time and have a uh, some barbecue out there. So what we want you to do is be a part of that, amen. And and with Sister Helen, I believe they get together, uh, you know, some finger food that we can have a great time. We should start about 5. We'll end up about 10. We're not going to be going till midnight. Amen. But how many know that's all right? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so Sunday morning, we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be uh, taking communion. Amen. As, as 2023, we'll be going out. The following Sunday, we will be doing communion. Welcoming in 2024. Amen. As Jesus Christ is the Passover lamb. Yeah. And so we want you all to, uh, you know, put that on your schedule. But as I said this right here, I want to open up our place so we can have a great time. We can get out there and fellowship. But I want you to get to know one another. Yeah. Because when the battle is raging, you need to know who your battle buddy is. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Stand with me as we give God glory and honor and praise this morning. Amen. Father, we thank you for the word. The word, Lord God, I think is what challenges us. The word is what changes us. The word is what motivates us. We thank you. The word is what protects us because we know, as, as Pastor said, that, Lord God, your word will not return to you void, but will accomplish all, every bit of what you sent it to do. Yes, and I thank you that by your stripes we are healed. Yes, I thank you that, Lord God, Isaiah 53, 5 said, by your stripes we were healed. And then when Jesus, you took those stripes, you're saying, now, by my stripes, you are healed. And I thank you for that. I pray for everyone here this morning that's going through sickness, going through a, a struggle in life. I pray that, Lord God, today that we're going to rise up. We're coming out of the battlefields, Lord God. Some of us have been wounded. We're coming out, Lord God. We got scars in the past, but we're coming out victorious. We're coming out raising up the word of God and saying it is in the word that we are achieving the, the great, Lord God, success that you've given unto us. I pray for the miracles, signs, and wonders that follow the believers. I believe that, Lord God, 2024, evil is going to raise its head like never before. But, Lord God, like Goliath, it's coming down. It's coming down in the name of Jesus. A smooth stone of God's word is going to bring it down. 
And we are going to stand firm. Now, Lord God, as we go today, protect each and every one. May they, Lord God, return to their battlefield where the enemy is fighting, where the real war is being fought. And may they come back victorious saying, it was through the blood of Jesus Christ, his birth, burial, and resurrection that we are not just survivors. We are thriving in the things of God. Now, we give you glory and praise in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said amen, amen. and amen. amen. Don't forget, uh, amen, we got some... Uh, cake and ice cream back here in the back. Uh, we, we, yeah, we want you to join us. Amen. Hallelujah. And watch your children uh, as they get back here. Amen. Uh, I've said this right here. We don't want to waste, but we want to take and, and enjoy what God has given unto us. So God bless you and we love you. And the altar is open for any prayer.